Ecuadorian citizens are being repressed by police forces while protesting in front of the headquarters of the Ministry of Environment in Quito. Hundreds of coal miners protested in Bosnia's capital Sarajevo on Wednesday to demand compensation for months of unpaid labor. And in Palestine, Israeli aggressions continue despite the United Nations Security Council's binding resolution ordering a ceasefire in Gaza. Hello and welcome to From the South. I'm Alejandra Garcia from Telesur Studios in Havana, Cuba. We begin with the news. Ecuadorian citizens are being repressed by police forces while protesting in front of the headquarters of the Ministry of Environment, Water and Ecological Transition in Quito. According to the Confederation of Indigenous Nationalities of Ecuador, Conaye, the protests are taking place in solidarity with the peasants victims of repression in the locality of Palo Quemado in Cotopaxi. Palo Quemado inhabitants, few more than a thousand and almost all peasants, reject the La Plata mining project which will affect several communities in the area. The organization denounced in its official account on X that the national police is raging against women, students and citizens at the sitting held at the Ministry of Environment in Quito. The brutality is part of the security policy of the President Daniel Novoa to repress the people who protest. Conaye condemned. The president of Argentina, Javier Milei, assured that he will not renew any of the 70,000 contracts of national state workers. During a speech in front of his country's businessmen, he promised the 70,000 layoffs while enumerating the achievements of his administration, referring to 50,000 public employees dismissed from their jobs. He added not only that, but also the, that contracts were terminated, pointing out that now more than 70,000 will be layoffed. After the president's statements was made public, the secretary general of the State Workers Association, Rodolfo Guiar, indicated that such a measure was unthinkable since it would paralyze the state. In Argentina, members of the Association of State Workers held a protest on Wednesday against the dismissal of personnel in the scientific sector. The members of the State Workers Association condemned the termination of the labor contracts of the National Agency for the Promotion of Research, Technological Development and Innovation. The union seek to denounce the cuts promoted by the government in the National Council for Scientific and Technical Research. President Javier Milei confirmed that they will not renew the contracts of another 70,000 public workers. The government of Bolivia announced the creation of a new credit line for agricultural producers who supply raw materials for the recently inaugurated biodiesel plant. The Ministry of Economy announced that the new credit will benefit producers of soybean, oil palm and other vegetables which works as biofuels for the biodiesel plant inaugurated this Tuesday. The portfolio detailed that the C Bolivia credit has an interest rate of 0.5% per year to encourage producers to cultivate the oil producing crops. The authorities announced that more than 12,000 loans have been disbursed under this initiative, which have mainly benefited micro, small and medium-sized enterprises. In Mexico, authorities reported forest fires in 15 out of the nation's 32 states, caused in part by the severe drought affecting some regions of the country. The National Forestry Commission reported 58 active forest fires, which affected four protected natural areas in the central state of Morelos, Veracruz, and the state of Mexico. The official statements estimated 
estimates that the preliminary area affected reached 1,421 hectares, and so far there have been no reports of injuries. One of the most affected regions was Veracruz, with a coastline on the Gulf of Mexico, where according to state authorities there were seven fires that affected the ecological reserve in Tehuacán. In Chile, weather authorities issued thunderstorm warnings for several areas of the country. The National Service for Disaster Prevention reported that the regions of Tarapaca, Arica, Antofagasta and Atacama will be affected. The storms will take place until next Saturday, March 30th. Authorities urge the population to take the necessary precautions during the Easter holiday. The agency recommended to avoid any type of contact with metallic objects and power and telephone lines. Authorities also cautioned to stay home if possible. Let's take a short break. But remember, you can join us on TikTok at Telesur English, where you will find news in different formats, news updates and more. Other stories coming up, stay with us. Welcome back. In the United States, rescue teams continue the search and recovery of the bodies of the six people who died during the collapse of the Baltimore City Bridge. According to the local authorities, since the beginning of the search and rescue operations, all possible resources have been used by air, land and sea in order to find those who were initially considered missing. On Wednesday, workers are expected to dive into the waters of the Patapsco River to try to find the bodies. The freighter Dali, bound for Sri Lanka, crossed into the bridge structure after the loss of power in the early hours of Tuesday morning, causing the bridge to collapse. Hundreds of coal miners protested in Bosnia's capital, Sarajevo, on Wednesday to demand compensation for months of unpaid labor. Bosnia remains heavily reliant on its 11 major coal mines for its energy needs, even as the country faces pressure to seek cleaner sources of power while it cuts European Union membership. The sector has long been plagued by poor management, failure to pay pensions and a record on environmental control. To add to the problems, more than 6,600 employees from Bosnia's Senegal coal mine allege they have gone without pay since December and have called for authorities to act. The protest comes as the Seneca mine is undergoing financial restructuring, unleashing fears that the facility will be closed in the near future following the laying off of around 200 employees. They have to pay unpaid pension contributions, pay departure bonuses, and do it in a humane way. Otherwise, a transition like this will not go through. We're going to raise hell. I have no words to describe this situation. We haven't received a single salary this year. I think someone should question how we live, where we live on. We have families. The Russian Commission of Investigation identified the bodies of 84 people, including five minors, after the terrorist attack of March 22nd. The Commission received 143 complaints from relatives and friends of the victims who disappeared as a result of the tragedy. The agency continues to conduct molecular genetic anal analysis to identify the rem remaining victims of the terrorist attack that claimed the lives of 140 people and left over 100 wounded. So far, 11 people have been arrested in connection with a terrorist attack. Israeli aggressions have not stopped, despite the United Nations Security Council's binding resolution ordering a ceasefire in Gaza. 
The Palestinian government accuses Israel of carrying out a massacre in Rafah and health centers. The foreign ministry assures that the Zionists want to expand the genocidal operation in Gaza. In the midst of a deep political crisis, Israel and analysts say that Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu is trying to deepen the ground war besieged by extremists in his cabinet, while humanitarian organizations are demanding that the United Nations enforce the ceasefire resolution. We stay in Gaza. The air dropped humanitarian aid is also deadly. Authorities confirmed the death of 18 Palestinians due to poor launching from the planes. Authorities also reported that the aid is thrown into the sea many times. Twelve people have drowned. Other times the air drops trigger stampedes of thousands of hungry people that have left up to now six fatal victims. Additionally, it happens that the packages fall in areas besieged by the occupation or in dangerous areas that expose the lives of those who are subjected to a starvation by Israel and the United States. Gazan authorities demand that land crossings be opened immediately so that aid can be distributed in a dignified and safer manner. The Palestinian resistant Hamas demands the International Criminal Court to stop being silent and to take urgent action in defense of the Palestinian people. The move comes after the United Nations Rapporteur for the Palestinian Territories presented a report titled Anatomy of a Genocide. According to the report, Israel is intentionally carrying out three genocides in the Strip, assassinations of members of a group, serious physical or mental harm to members of a group, and deliberately causing conditions in a group calculated to bring about its partial or complete physical destruction. The document proves that the Israeli government dropped more than 70,000 tons of bombs on Gaza in 160 days. The Palestinian resistance holds the international community responsible. In Jordan, thousands of people joined the fourth consecutive day of siege of the Israeli embassy in Amman on Wednesday in solidarity with the Palestinian cause and resistance. In previous days, those gathered overcame the security cordon imposed by the Jordanian forces. Neither the warnings nor the repression have stopped them. They demand from their government more dignified and radical positions, among them the rupture of the Arab Peace Treaty of Wadi, signed in 1994 between their country and Israel. They repudiate the siege of the hospitals and the murders of thousands of women and children. They also support, without half measures, the operation of the Palestinian resistance. We have a final short break coming up, but before we invite you to join our WhatsApp community for our English-speaking audience, you can scan the QR code on screen to join directly and share the link to reach more people. Constant news coverage of Latin America and the Caribbean as well as, well as the rest of the world. Stay connected and informed with Telesur, final short break, and go away. Welcome back to From the South. Chinese government authorities held a meeting with representatives of the United States business community. President Xi Jinping met with representatives of the business, strategic and academic communities of the United States. In this regard, the Chinese president said that the success of China and the United States provides an opportunity for both parties to grow and improve their bilateral relationship. Xi Jinping also stated that this, his nation is planning to implement important measures for world-class world business reform to provide a broad development space for international companies, including those from the United States. Thailand is said to become the first Southeast Asian nation to recognize same-sex marriage after politicians pass a same-sex marriage bill. The lower house of parliament overwhelmingly voted in favor of the bill, with 400 supporting its passage and just 10 against it in a final reading on Wednesday. If the bill take effect, Thailand would be just the third Asian country to legalize same-sex marriage. The bill now requires approval from the country's Senate and finally endorsement from the king before becoming law. 
More than a decade in, ma in the making, the legislation could take effect within 120 days of royal approval. The legislation could change references to men, women, husbands and wives in the marriage law to gender neutral terms. It would also grant LGBTQ couples inheritance and adoption rights equal to those of heterosexual marriages. For those who have been waiting for the same-sex marriage, we only have one step left, which is to be approved by the Senate. Then you will have the rights to register for marriage and the rights that you have been denied in the past. Today, we, the minority member of parliament, have voted to approve it. I think there's a lot of excitement, but also um, there's this little feeling that um, I think a bit of sadness that we couldn't pass the parental section, but I think overall we are really happy. In the framework of the World Theatre Day, Argentinian actors and directors suffered the adjustment policies carried out by the government of Javier Milei, who considers culture as an expense and not as an investment. This is the phase of funding cuts and the drug grading of the Ministry of Culture to a secretary. Our correspondent Santiago Coré with the story. In 1962, UNESCO declared March 27th as World Theatre Day. The date is currently lived in the South American country with a lack of government support. For me, theater is a network of mirrors that represents the identity of a society, in this case Argentina. To have proposed or suggested the closure of the National Theater Institute, speaks of a policy that obviously represents that managerial view of a nation, and neoliberalism has that objective or that standard of wanting to find in the economy a form of regulation and not of management, and the theater itself has been a bulwark of resistance in Argentina. Sector leaders believe that culture is not a privilege, but a right. This government is the epiphenomenon of something, and that something seems to be that there is a sector of the Argentinian life that despises culture. It is a kind of leadership class without a nation's project. Therefore, since it doesn't have one, it doesn't need a culture. It simply needs to take as much profit as possible out of the present moment from the Argentinian people. That's the problem. The wide range of cuts this government is implementing in the field of culture is very brutal. But it is also creating a sort of animosity and an absolutely incredible demonization in the field of culture. On the other hand, we don't understand the need to implement that operation. It is not clear what they are achieving with that, other than creating and generating unnecessary controversies. Those who are also affected by the government's policies are those who carry out works in communities or cooperative spaces. It is a theater genre made by the neighbors of each territory. So the budget cuts also result in our having fewer places by the fact that we manage to open as many doors as possible to extend our work. Culture needs a state support, but there is a mistake and confusion. The subsidies are not provided by the state. We are not taking any food from the children of Chaco as they want people to believe. We have our own system of subsidies, which is through ticket sales and platforms. They are actually resorting to demagogy to make themselves look good to who knows who. In the midst of this date's commemoration, everyone agrees that culture represents the country before the world, and particularly that Argentinian theater is in danger. Santiago Corey, Telesur, Buenos Aires.
In France, linking its brand to stirring moments during the upcoming Olympic and Paralympic Games in Paris, Louis Vuitton has created a bespoke trunk to house the torches and the medals that will be best, best owned on winning athletes this summer. The first trunk will come into public view on May 8th. Then the Olympic torch begins its journey from Marseille in the south of France to Paris, its ultimate destination from July 14th. In August, the Paralympic torch will embark from Stoke Mandeville, UK, site of the first competition for, for wheelchair athletes in 1948. The two flames are to pass through the hands of more than 11,000 torch bearers. Pietro Beccari, chairman and chief executive office of Louis Vuitton, stated that they are honored and extremely proud to be part of the Paris 2024 Olympic Games with the mission of packing and representing the defining symbols of the Olympism and Paralympism. We have come to the end of this news brief, but you can find these and many other stories on our website at telesurenglish.net and join us on social media, Facebook, X, Instagram, Telegram and TikTok. For Telesur English, I'm Alejandra Garcia. Thank you for watching.